inspire you. Exactly. But right? that's what we call rewriting the script yes. up here. Yes. So that's what your attempt is, yes. to have them rewrite their script. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, think, I, I think that personally, I, I don't know. I feel like for me, I want everyone to just sit for a moment and be with where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there is so much, there's so much struggle for something that doesn't exist. And we're kind of, especially with society, we do a lot to go on these wild goose chases, you know, for, for an ideal of, of happiness and, and, you know, being proud of your life and, and all that. And yeah, it is a wonderful concept, but I think that that's something that's innate in every human being when you're born. I don't think that that's something you need to... It's not true, you know? because I've gone into the embryo stage in hypnosis with a client. And the method that he got was that women be subservient to the man. How did I know she was in India? I, I told her, where was your environment? Who were you with? What did you see? What didn't you see? What did you watch? And she was in darkness. Total darkness. There was no visual at all. She loved herself. I ran to the library after I did that. And of course, I was freaked out. It was when I first started doing the therapy. Right. And sure enough, it's documented that the embryo receives a message. That's why they start to play music for children. Right. Because they're beginning to realize that. So that script is what we call the initial sense of and experience. It could be a teacher, it could be a brother, it could be a father, it could be anything where their self-worth is diminished. Okay, but I think it's on different levels. I think that Always. Right? Like I think there's that and I was, I was taught, um, my dad used to have me do this meditation where you'd have me sit and, you know, and, and be deep and, and feel your own body and feel where you are in the universe, right? And then he would say, okay, now, who's the one meditating? And we'd be like, get out. Oh, me. And then be like, okay, who's the one watching you meditate? And then you have to go, you'd have to draw out, and you have to draw out. And really, you're just going more deeper and deeper into your consciousness. But what I think, uh, what I get from that is that there, everything you're talking about is, a com is completely true. And as human beings and as the way the brain works, it's very scientific, it's very mechanical, it's very like, you know, the, the why you are the way you are, the why you, it's a computer, exactly. <coughs> um, but then there's something bigger than that, and there's a deep, uh, the, you know the Shambhala by Pilgrim Trumpa, the book The Shambhala? So it's, um, one of the things he talks about is there's a basic goodness in everyone, and he doesn't say goodness meaning like good or bad kind of goodness, but there's an innate ability to create and observe at the same time, um, and that, that never goes away. No matter how clouded the brain becomes, no matter how, you know, messed up the wiring gets, it's innately beautiful and wonderful simply because it exists. It's part of the universe, and the universe is not bad anyway. Like, there's no, you know, in the grand cosmos of things, it's not like there's a certain star that's like, you know, a rebel child or like, you know, mm -hmm. or a certain, like, you know, that's, that's not how the universe is. There's not a right or wrong, there's just an existing. So we exist on two different planes. We exist on that field, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that, that we simply are, and that is why everything's wonderful and everything's completely fine. And then there's the part of us where we can kind of zoom into this other world that we've created with our consciousness, which is where everything you come to say comes into play, right? There's this, there's a life that we live that's based off of the ramifications in the world that we have as a society and as individuals created for ourselves, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so we have to navigate both of those. Right. <laughs> no, I, I'm totally, I'm totally hearing you, honey. Totally. It's just that I get the end of it, yeah. where they've already had this embedded in them, and <clears throat> like the many marriages that don't work because one mate feels if she loves me or he loves me, he's going to be what I want him to be, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't change. So. These are the messages that are deeply rooted in them, and they're not quite sure where they got those messages. 
It seems that <clears throat> what Claire is teaching is that no matter what your programming is or isn't right. from the embryo or mm -hmm. any other point in the continuum of your life, we human beings do have the ability, like what Claire's dad was teaching her, to stop and be mindful and to tune into something which is inherently light, beautiful, that life is inherently right. Right. beautiful no matter what interpretations your brain has been programmed to create around it. And that if you can transcend, even for moments, those interpretations mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. traumas and whatever, that <clears throat> that creates a new destination, mm -hmm. right? That the old, the, the old destination is, you know, the Tony Robbins thing and, and or the motivational speaker thing is you, you've got to get your life together and reach this goal out there at some point and when you do you're going to be happy and what Claire is saying in part because her life span is likely to be different than most people that that's not actually true that's actually bullshit yeah I mean, I haven't achieved any of my dreams, really. I mean, I, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of incredible things I've done, but like when I was younger, I wanted to live in New York and have an art studio and like you know be like a hipster artist, right? And so in, because I knew that was not a possibility, first of all, because I probably wasn't gonna at the time live long enough to actually do that with my life. I sat there in the hospital room and I looked at what I had and I said, okay, I can make an artist's loft here. So then I, get, I asked my mom to bring me a bunch of clay so I could do sculpting and I set up my room and I made it look like a New York loft apartment. And and then I, and then I was there and it wasn't my dream and it, it was a, you know, to everyone else that's like, a, oh, that's so like, oh, that's kind of pitiful. <laughs> like, like, oh, she like created her own little space. But to me, it was, <laughs> I've actually <laughs> had someone say that to me before. Um, but to me, it was, it was beautiful. It was right where I was, and it was, you know what I mean. And so I think there's, I think that there's truth to both, uh, you know, to every, to everything. And I just think that I just want people to not be so afraid of, of life, you know, not be so afraid of, of, of all the things that could go wrong, right? Because even if it really does go horribly wrong. And everything that you were ter uh, you know, everything that you were scared of happening happens. You're still alive. Uh, you're still you still have consciousness. You can be you know trapped in a in a in a small little like white room um, and be strapped to a bed and discover the meaning of the universe and life and the wonders just because you have this conscious thing on your shoulders, right? I mean, so at the end of the day, yes, you can do so much with your life, but it has to come from a place of realizing that no matter where you are, you have the capacity to tune in to something much bigger than yourself. You have the capacity to be truly happy. And, that, <clears throat> and then you add the infinity aspect to it, right? Right. right. Because when you say, you know, your life is beautiful and, and you can experience all of this no matter what's going on in your life, then how does infinity factor into that? <laughs> As you take a big, big bite of the burger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, and this is the complete truth, and this scares a lot of people, I am ten times more terrified of being a healthy person than I am of dying. And I, you know, I think the first time I ever said that to someone, I was like, no, I can understand. Well, but, but, but what but, are the specifics of your fear? Mm. Well, there's multiple levels of it. Partially because it's all I've known, and because it's so linked to my identity. But the thought of being without the unknown. Right. right. Okay. Of course. Um, the other part of it is that I grew up uh, with hundreds of people coming in and out of my life who were all completely healthy and completely miserable. And okay. you know, so so it's not it's not like I think you know if you are healthy, you're all of a sudden you okay. know miserable. So there was a rationale hmm. to it's adopt more, it. You know, it's more that I just think I don't know. I'm lucky, so okay. incredibly lucky that I got. It forced me to face death 
which taught me so much. It forced me to be okay, still, was, which taught me so much. It opened you, you know? up to yeah. an arena that very few people are uh, able to enter. Yeah, exactly. And I and I love it. So, I mean, it's a, it's such a it's such a okay. part of me. You know, that yeah. being said, I don't think it would be horrible to be healthy. There's a whole new world that would be opened up to me. That I yeah, but I understand that you've gone into acceptance. And with the acceptance, you've gone into gratitude. Right. Which very few people, whether they're ill or healthy, are capable of doing. And <clears throat> Clara's gift so is to basically teach that process for everyone to use, no matter what your circumstances are, and they're likely to be less challenging than yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I, so that's really the methodology, mm -hmm. right? That sense of being, of, of accepting and, and go, being in the present moment about it. I mean, it's just, it's basic Buddhist mindfulness mm -hmm. practice, basically. Yeah, I know. That's well, it's also in the Jewish religion, because it was beshert. Yeah. It was meant to be. Mm -hmm. So we go into acceptance if we permit ourselves yeah. to. Yeah. And then we go into gratitude for the things that we do have. Yeah. Because so much of us forget that the person, when we have our toe pinching, we forget about the person with the foot. Mm. Because mm -hmm. we are self absorbed. That's so true. Um, the one, I actually put this in the thing, I don't know if I'll actually share it, but it was inspiring to me. The first time I ever got asked to give advice to another CFR, right? I mean, because this is right when I started out with public speaking and all that. Um, and this, she was like 12 years old at the time. Um, so I was only a few years older, and she was so like, pissed off that she had to miss this school field trip, and that she was stuck in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and she was asking me for advice as more. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. You know, for a second. And then I realized, okay, what she needs to hear is not like how it's going to be okay and how she's going to get to go re be reunited mm -hmm. and like it'll work out again. She needs to like realize that there's so much more going on in the world than just her and her being stuck in the hospital. And so I was like, you know, and, and, and I said it a lot well, more tactfully. Yeah, that is. Yeah. But I, but I said more tactfully than this, but I was like, like, this is like the, there's, there's a bird learning how to fly somewhere in the world, there's someone dying in the world, there's a child being born, there's a star dying, there's like, the world is going on around you, it's spinning out of you and you're a part, you are a part of it, right? I mean, and that's, that's such a gift to be a part of it. It doesn't matter if you're going on a school field trip or if you're, you know what I mean, or, or if you're in the hospital, you are still a part of this life and this world, and there's so many things going on around you that you're not letting yourself see because do they get it? Know? Some of them actually have. Yeah, weirdly good, enough. Good, because yeah. it's a very difficult message for most people. Oh yeah. Because it's me, myself, and I. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's near impossible to get draw out of this brain because it's yeah. where all of our understanding mm -hmm. of the world comes from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she didn't get it, but the, uh, there's, there's a few people. <laughs> there's yeah. actually a few people who did. And well, I, as long you know, as there are some, that's uh, the important thing. But as long as there are some that will have it resonate, because you're not going to reach everybody. Well, not now. But, not yet. Well, we're just talking about the present. <laughs> right? But it's, <clears throat> it's either planting seeds or actually having people get it and actually mm -hmm. shift the way, the lens through which they mm -hmm. look at life. Mm -hmm. right? So let's go back to your speech. You know what? Let her finish her sandwich. Yeah, finish her sandwich. And she'll mull over it while she's eating it. And she'll... Mm -hmm. yeah.